greetings and salutations. I've been messing around at the front of the bus here. And no. Uh, put the dash back in. So this is just temporary, just to give me the uh the what the actual subfloor height is gonna be. And if you remember this used to set down, you know, two and a quarter inches lower on top of the floor, uh, the steel floor, and then I raised everything, which made the uh, um, heater box too big. So, yeah, I got to kind of redo everything over here. But I wanted to, this whole area in the front here is probably going to get built out. Um, by me to uh, accommodate the new uh, controls there. So what I've decided to do is to use one of the intermediate um, heater cores, the, the bus heaters, the intermediate ones, the ones that were back in the passenger area, and use one of the cores for my, my heat there, I use a squirrel cage fan setup that was originally in that heater box because they move a lot of air. And I am going to run packs from the back to there. I had some commenters say, packs is only good at 180 degrees. Well, packs at 180 degrees can hold 100 PSI. And at 200 degrees, it can hold 85 PSI. Stamped right on the on the hose. So I'm going to use one inch packs uh, from the bulkhead up to where it connects to the rubber lines to go to the heater core. That's coming down the line. I can't really finish that until all of the subfloor is in. So I'll be ordering up insulation uh, tonight, perhaps, and uh, that should come sometime at the end of the week. Um, and I've been you know dinking around with this as much as I can to figure out kind of plant that seed in my, my head. And then uh, I'm putting this window back together. I'm just gonna put it back together and just spray paint it with a rattle can and uh, deal with, you know, installing a new window later on down the road. And I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with this, this door opening here. I'm not really happy with the way that the door bowed a little bit when I welded that center strip in. Ooh, yellow jackets, isn't that great? Nope, honeybee. Fly away, honeybee. So, I sat down the other night and, and uh, added up some receipts. Let me tell you what I got into this thing so far. Okie dokie. On the 26th of December, I flew up to a battle, or actually Portland, to meet with the seller of this fine chariot. I could pick it up in Battleground, which is just across the river from Portland. Battleground, Washington, and I drove it from Battleground, Washington. Left Battleground, Washington on the 27th and arrived in Pahrump, Nevada on the 28th. And it, I only lost the alternator in that 1,200 mile journey. So I bought it on eBay, sight unseen, based on, I think, three pictures. And, and it's an interesting story how I found this bus, but I paid $1,225 for it. And, uh, you know, if, if you don't know, I could, sell the tires out from underneath this thing and probably get my initial investment back but the engine itself is worth at least four thousand dollars and probably a couple grand for the transmission so I'm really not out any money right now at this point the alternator cost 175 dollars that was you know all penance to get to the point where it's ready for the conversion right um, just to do the roof raise was uh, 1174 bucks to buy all the steel, the framing steel, um, this steel, um, the uh, um, 16 gauge steel for the front, and you know, the, the just to, to get it to a point where, okay, now I can start doing the conversion. Before, this doesn't include any of the, the stuff I did on the floor, uh, it's just the expense for doing the roof raise. So, to get to the, th get the thing to a point where the bus is ready for conversion. 
It's purchase price, $175 for the alternator and the steel to do the roof raise, $2,724 approximately. The materials so far add up to about $2,864. Uh, for a grand total of about 55, 60, somewhere in that neck of the woods. After tonight, it'll be over 6,200 because another $600 foam kit. Uh, and I did buy a, a new latch for the rear door. So right now we're at $6,200. And just doing some fuzzy math, I figure I'll probably have another five or six into it to finish it, to get the interior and everything done and, and everything. Yeah, I, I figured I'd be into this thing for ten to twelve thousand dollars, and it, it's looking like that's you know where it's headed. So that's the working on today, working on uh, putting that window back together so I can get it installed and and uh, caulked in place, putting in the dashboard so I know how uh, what I need to do to build out the uh, the heating system there. I got into the basement here. This is something that I've been. Anybody want to buy some bus windows? There's a whole bunch of them. I'll sell the whole lot for 200 bucks. This bracket here is rotted out, so the it's kind of floppy. So I gotta fix that. Yeah, there's some some rust here in the basement. I gotta do some some patch in there. It's like this was patched before here. A little bit over there. The chowder right there. A little gapage there. I guess I'll just go ahead and spill the beans where I'm what I'm intending to do. About those two uh, portable AC units, I got a 12,000 and 11,000 BTU portable AC, and I'll use the 12,000 BTU AC in the master. I'll probably build that right into a cabinet and just punch a vent hole out the back and use like a dryer type vent uh, to ventilate that out and then in the front half here I have this distance that uh, looks like about maybe six feet from there to there that I can build another box or a couple of slides what I want to do is I have to get out there and, and get some measurements and see if I can pull this off but I would like to put the generator here and then I want to get a mini split AC system and put that here and then the, the lines will go up and then up to the uh, up to the wall that's over there and it'll probably sit on the interior maybe the the dividing wall between the uh, bathrooms and the living area My God, that sounds hideous and then I'll put uh, the uh, fuel cell 20 gallon fuel cell here for the generator. Do you want to see the fuel cell? Come here, show me. Oh, it's hideous. It sounds terrible. You know what? I'm not gonna show it to you there. I'll, I'll go lay it in the go lay it in the bus. Ah, oh, it sounds terrible. So there's the fuel cell. And then I can run a braided. That's capped off. I'll run a braided line from here through a bulkhead, a bulkhead fitting, or perhaps just through a grounded hole. Put the uh, small engine fuel pump on the other side of that. I'll run my vent off of here cap this one and run the vent a hard line and out the bottom and on this side would be the black and gray water tanks the uh, fresh water tank is going to go into the bed in the master oh yeah it sounds terrible oh good god these rabbits, they mock me. A few minutes ago, there was 10 of them out here.
clear as mud? Thought so. Yeah, I had a lot of great suggestions and some others that weren't so great. But, you know, not every suggestion can be a home run. Uh, doing the heating system at the, at the windshield with an electric uh, type heater, a ceramic heater, or any kind of 12-volt setup just takes too much and too much of a load on the electrical system uh, to, to heat that much windshield. And then uh, the, a couple of people offered up the suggestion think, of using a diesel-fired preheater or auxiliary heater, and that's a great idea, and I would love to be able to use one like that. In fact, that would be my preferred method of doing that because then I could have a completely isolated system separate from the engine and have it drawing off the fuel coming out of the fuel tank. And I had to have it, it, it could have its own fuel system, but I could plug it into the, tee it off the fuel system on the bus itself and run it that way. The problem is they're $2,500. And I, I didn't even have that kind of money wrapped up into the entire bus. You know, the purchase price of the bus was half that. So that really wasn't a, a feasible option. Although it was a good idea. I loved being able to do that. Uh, tomorrow I'll be going out and getting some plywood and I'll start framing out the back back part of that bus and uh, In a week or so we'll get some more insulation and uh, Hopefully it's not 150,000 degrees And I lose all the yield In the meantime have fun stay safe shoot straight keep your powder dry and you have yourself a splendid day Okay I'm done. See ya